the first method we will discuss is Kanban. And Kanban is illustrated here with a very simple example. You have two workstations producing two types of products, A and B. Now, every workstation has a so-called supermarket. Supermarket is a limited inventory of intermediate products, or in the case of workstation 2, finished products. And every workstation also has a Kanban wall. Now, the way Kanban operates is illustrated here as follows. Let's assume we have a customer asking for a product A. Then it takes one of the finished goods from the supermarket of workstation 2. And when it takes that item, the card that is attached to it, and it's called the Kanban card, is removed. And that Kanban card is then moved to the Kanban wall of Workstation 2. So that's what happens here. Item A is sold to the customer and the Kanban card moves to the Kanban wall. Now Workstation 2 has uh, some available capacity. And if it has available capacity, it checks its Kanban wall to see what it has to produce next. And now it can see on its Kanban wall Item A has been sold, there is a Kanban card for item A on my wall, so I'm allowed to produce item A. So what happens next is Workstation 2 takes the Kanban card and starts producing the next A item. But for that, it needs the materials from the upstream Workstation, Workstation 1 in our example. And so then at Workstation 1, the same will happen as what just happened in Workstation 2. Items will be taken from the supermarket and the Kanban card uh, will be detached from it and will be moved to the Kanban wall. And that's what you observe here. Workstation 2 starts producing A. It takes the materials from the supermarket of the upstream workstation and the Kanban card there moves to the corresponding Kanban wall. And then at Workstation 1, the same happens all over again. Workstation 1 observes that it has a new Kanban card on its wall, so it's allowed to produce the next A item. And to make the next A item, it needs to retrieve materials from the upstream stage, where in the upstream stage, the item uh, will be taken and the corresponding Kanban card will move to the upstream Kanban wall, and so on, all the way up to the start of the production wall. So this is how Kanban works. So that can be summarized with the Kanban rule as follows. First of all, that's the key rule for all card-based shop floor control systems, every item has to have a card attached to it. Then the consuming product takes away goods from the supermarket and then doing so releases the Kanban card, puts it on the Kanban wall. Then the producing process observe it, observes its Kanban wall and produces items for which it has a card on its wall. And then there are some additional rules. Well, first of all, of course, if there's no Kanban card, you're not allowed to produce anything. But second, a Kanban card does not always exactly correspond to just one item. Because, well, if you think of batching, we've discussed that before, we move items from one workstation to the next in transfer batches. And so the size of one transfer batch, that's what we will call a container quantity. So in fact, we will need one Kanban card per container quantity or per transfer batch, and not necessarily one Kanban card per individual item. So second rule is, if you produce, then you have to make exactly enough to fill one container, to fill one transfer batch, and then attach the common card to it. And then the third and very important rule, it's not explicit, uh, but it's part of the Kanban system, is if you make something and you want to pass it along by attaching a Kanban card to it, you can only do so if there are no defects, if there are no quality issues with your product. So if you make something with a defect or with quality issues, you cannot attach a Kanban card to it. You're not allowed to pass it to the downstream process. Now let's take a look at this Kanban wall, because in our example it was very simple. Whenever a Kanban card appeared, we assumed we could start making it. Now remember that there are 
process batch sizes as well. And the process batch size is not necessarily the same as the transfer batch size. So in some cases, if the process batch size is more than one transfer batch size, we will have to wait until multiple cards of the same product have been put on the Kanban wall. And then a Kanban wall can look something like this. For example, if we would have five products in our line, we can see that for A, the orange zone indicates um, that we cannot start producing yet. And as soon as we have a fifth card for A, then we have reached the minimum batch size, the minimum process batch size, consisting in this case of five times the transfer batch size. So in this case, we're in the green zone with A, we could make item A next. If we look at B and C, there are already one or two cards available, but not enough to reach the minimum batch size for B and C. So at this point, this process is not allowed to produce B or C. Then, if you look at D, D has a minimum batch size of just one, but there are already six Kanban cards on the wall. So that means it's very urgent. There has been a lot of consumption of item D, and we haven't replenished it yet. So because of the many D cards, the Kanban wall also indicates the urgency with which we should produce the next item. In this case, it's very obvious next item should be D. So that is, in short, how Kanban works. So we have the supermarkets with the limited inventory of each item. Items that are taken away bring the corresponding Kanban cards to the wall. And based on the situation of cards on the wall, we decide what to produce next in the process.